Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today, we are looking at a very cool, but possibly to you, rather useless tool. It's called Popcorn FX. And it's depending on what kind of game engine you're working with, this may or may not be of use to you. But what this is, is a combination product. On the one hand, it is the Popcorn FX V2 Editor, which is what we're going to showcase today. You can grab and download this one with a free account. Uh, and then behind the scenes, there are also uh, plugins for Unity, Unreal, C++, for integrating it into your own software or engine. And and finally, Lumberyard. Now, the catch is those are not all available. So like I said, depending on who you are and what you're doing with it, this may or may not be of use to you. But what this allows you to do is create advanced particle systems. So first off, a little bit about Popcorn Effects 2 Editor. It's multi-platform, available on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. It is using a node-based style. We'll show the node-based editor in action in just a few minutes. Uh, it's got native in-editor seamless CPU and GPU simulation, so it runs fast on the top. It's got an optimized final runtime, so you can embed this in your own game or game engine of choice, if you so wish. And as I mentioned earlier, there are those various different uh, plugin options out there. We'll get back to that in a second. And there's extensive rendering support for the runtime. Uh, so it natively supports the editor, natively supports direct uh, 3D 11, 12, OpenGL, and Vulkan. And there is advanced debugging and profiling tools. But first, let's get to some sexy, sexy particles. So here you can see it, um, the particle of uh, the popcorn effects with some of the samples running. Uh, I'm going to start with the Christmas theme one. And we're going to see here, creating a Christmas tree. So you can see a particle system with snow, a procedural created tree, everything else. Let's run that again. So boom. So there you get an idea of the kind of particle effects you could create here. Everything has uh, selections that, that can be drawn and handled with, but ultimately everything here is being driven by this node graph available down here. So you can see all these various different pieces working together to create. So here's the garland creator. Here is the tree creator that we were looking at, uh, the logo, the messages, and so on. And each one of these things is a layer. So you see leaves being created on the tree and sparks being created on the tree. This isn't all that there is to it. In fact, you drill down here, you can see more complex uh, node-based networks going together to create uh, the various different particle systems. So this is creating the leaves on the tree. All these things kind of ultimately work together. So your sparks, uh, all the various different pieces of your particle system are being created by these different flows. And here you can see uh, the process that's going on. So the snow is coming through and this is creating the snow. You can see the process of creating the actual snow in the scene. And then up here, you can see you've got a timeline of all the various different things in your scene. So the, the tree, the garland, the snow, and so on. All these things were pretty early on. We can jump to any point in the timeline right here and uh, kind of see where we are in the process. You got controls for level of detail, for uh, speeding it up, maxing out the frame rate, and so on. Uh, you've also got camera controls like you would expect. So uh, right mouse button orbit, middle mouse button pan, and then uh, mouse wheel to zoom in and out. So this is one such example. Let's go look at another one. Here's a flamethrower in action. And there you see a uh, particle system used to create flames. Pretty straightforward. Once again, you can see where it starts, the things that are being created to do it. So there's the flame effect being created, the smoke column being created. You can see it after the fact right there. Uh, and then here is the timeline controlling everything. Let me just pop that. Oh, should be able to see that. I thought I could anyways. So there is another particle system. Let's go look at one more bit of eye candy. Here is a globe effect following a mesh. So there is, you know, if you're creating particle systems for a holograph inside of your game or whatever, there is one such example. And again, entirely node based. So now let me show you the simplest of examples. So I'm going to come here to particles and I'm going to create a new effect. I'll create an empty effect and I will call this YouTube demo and we will open it up. All right. So here we are in the particle creator and you start with a root node. So this is kind of like the entry point of your particle system. So now with that created, what we want to go ahead and do is create a multiplier. So just right click and then we can search down and we got an event multiplier. This is essentially what creates your particles. And then you've got a various different options over here. So you could do total particles, particles per second or so on. So let's do particles per second. Uh, we'll make this last for ever. All right, there we go. And we will create 100 particles. All right, so we're doing 100 particles per second. So now we just got to link those two together. So now we need to actually go ahead and do something. We could actually create the particles directly in here, but I'm going to drop it down into another layer. So right click and create a layer. All right, and then wire that up right there. Now the layer doesn't really do anything. It's an organizational, it's its own subgraph, if you will. So now what I can do is drop down in there and here we are. So you see this guy right here. This is kind of like the life uh, details of your particle system. So you can say here, okay, the life of uh, one 
uh, second, I believe that is, or we could come in here and go ahead and create a float. So, and then drop that in as the input. If you've done any visual programming, this is going to be immediately familiar to you. So each particle is going to last 10 seconds. All right, so there we go. So now at this point in time, it might be nice to actually have, say, I don't know, a particle. So let's go ahead and we'll right click and we'll create a billboard. This is a standard 2D sprite based particle, right? So I can see immediately we have one right there. Each particle is lasting 10 seconds. And now you see we've got a number of different properties we can control on the particle. So if I grab this billboard node over here, you see a bunch of options over here. But the key things is you've got your diffuse channel over here. You can change out the uh, particle map. Uh, this is where you'd put your sprite in that you wish to use. We're keeping with additive particles right there. So let me just go on, let me just, how do I get back? All right. Oh, I just expanded that down. Okay, so we can also come in here and for example, grab the color. You'll notice as I am changing the color, the color is changing up here. So you can set values directly, or of course you can set them in as parameters. So now let's actually look at using parameters to control this guy because um, a particle that isn't moving really isn't that exciting. So it's gonna come in here and I'm gonna add in a physics controller. Okay, so now we have physics controlling our particle, and let's control our position using physics. All right, there we go. So we got uh, physics controlling this guy, not really doing too, too much yet. So come in here, velocity, and let's set the velocity to negative two on the z-axis. And you see immediately, let's restart that, you're going to see, boom. So there is our particles dropping over time. So now we have particles over time, 10 seconds worth. They're going to just keep dropping like so, like that. And that is some physics in our scene. Now, maybe not the most exciting thing you've ever seen. So let's actually uh, set some of the parameters coming into the physics system here. So I'm going to go ahead and set in a, a vector randomization. So just come in here and do a VRAND like so. Again, it's got its own set of values over here. And we're just going to drop that into the position node there. And there you can see, instead of just a single string now, we're randomizing in a, a particular value. You've got control over it here. Um, you also got control over right here so we can uh, change out the curve that's controlling this guy, etc. So I think I actually can change that directly over here. Anyways, I'm not going to get into that level of detail. Everything also has an advanced uh, level of properties around it. You've got randomization or seed values you can change and so on. So basically, this is the world's simplest particle system here. Everything can obviously be controlled by nodes. Here's an idea of the nodes that are available. I know this is a little hard to see. Unfortunately, I don't have any control over the... Um, uh, DPI scaling on this guy. It works well on high DPI monitors, but you don't have fine-tuned controls, at least not that I could find. But you can see an idea of all the various different nodes that are available to you, like that. And they just kind of keep going and going and going, and we can keep going. And that is essentially how you would, uh, you know, all your parameters are coming in too. You got a number of values that are also being passed in by the scene. So you see your scene, uh, the delta on the scene. Uh, you got simulations that can be run. There, there's so much more advanced than what I'm I'm actually showing here, but there are a ton of actual controls for handling things, including even uh, synchronizing to audio and animation tracks, etc. And again, it all just kind of works down to a simple, you start off with a root node, and then you can build up and you can create these layers of things that are happening. You can have parallel particle systems, and eventually you just sort of all work those things together. And if you have skill, unlike myself, you can, in the end, create some pretty cool particle effects uh, using just basically these hierarchy of nodes, as you can see here. And once again, everything drills down. So there's a layer feeding into a layer and there and so on. And each one of these, just basically a simple collection of nodes that go together to create your various different particle systems. So that is a quick hand on, hands on with, part of, part of, with popcorn effects, kind of a cool program. As I mentioned earlier, this one is going to be collective, selectively useful to some of you guys. So let's get into some of those details right now. So right now you can come in here, you can go sign up for a free account, grab popcorn effects V2 editor, everything you just saw in action. Uh, you can see the complete thing there. But then the kicker is, uh, you're getting into the licensing conditions required. There are a number of uh, different plugins out there. The one that works best and where you are happiest right now is if you're an Unreal Engine developer. There is an Unreal Engine uh, integration out there for Popcorn Effects V2. So if you want to try it out, you got to create an account on their support page and then download it. Unfortunately, there is a manual approval process, so that isn't an instantaneous thing. Uh, and then they got some setup instructions on getting it up and working. Now, one of the reasons why Unreal Engine 4 seems to be the best is Popcorn Effects was actually a mega grant recipient from Unreal. So if you're using Unreal Engine and you want to integrate Popcorn Effects files into your project, you can do so with their plugin. And you actually, uh, you're opening the native file format Popcorn Effects uses. 
process, not an export process. You basically just save the file, drop it into your game, and you can control it from inside of Unreal Engine. Now, if you're using other game engines, the news gets a little worse. So if you're using uh, Popcorn FX Unity, I believe the earlier version of Popcorn FX 1.x works in it. Uh, integration is fully functional, production ready on all platforms, compatible with Unity 2019.x and above. However, due to limited resources, we're currently focusing our efforts on A to AAA games and our support customers through their production. We will release a free public plugin for PC and mobile platforms at the end of this year. So just be aware of that. If you're a Unity developer, you can play around with Popcorn FX as a tool, uh, but the uh, integration for Unity does not appear to exist yet. That is also the case uh, for the Lumberyard plugin. Uh, it's going to be uh, hopefully in 2021. By the way, guys, you got a typo on your site. And then next up, the C++ one. This one comes down to the licensing that you have in place. But if you want to use Popcorn Effects and have your own particle systems in, in your own thing, uh, for example, iClone 7.x actually integrates Popcorn Effects into its software. So if you're creating a 3D software, but you need to add some advanced particle effects to it, Popcorn Effects could be a good option. You can see it's got uh, run times for just about every platform you could be interested in. And then we finally get into pricing. So when we talk about pricing, what you saw here today, uh, the desktop and mobile plugins for Unity and Unreal Engine are free. However, this one doesn't exist yet. So you can use it for desktop, Unreal Engine, uh, for PC and mobile for free, which is cool. And uh, then we get into editor. Uh, so personal version is free. Uh, so if you're using it just to check it out, non-commercial or valuation purposes, completely free. You get into indie. So if you make less than $200,000 a year, it's $25 per seat per month. Uh, and then professionals, $125. So that is if you have higher money amount. And if you make over, studios would turn over over $100 million, basically get into enterprise pricing, a different set there. And then there's some educational pricing available as well. Um uh, and then the runtime evaluation is you've got to reach out to them to find out what the actual cost of integrating this into your game will be. So there's definitely some uh, costs attached, but the cool thing is, again, you can check out Popcorn FX for free. And if you make less than $200,000 a year and you're using Unreal Engine, you can create mobile and uh, desktop applications for free using that plugin. Uh, same will be true for Unity. Unfortunately, that plugin doesn't exist yet. So as I started this off, I said a program may not be useful to all of you, well, that's the case. But if you're creating a game engine and you want to integrate a third party in or creating your own engine completely from scratch or you're working on something you want to integrate this in, there are options out there, but you've got to contact them for the actual pricing on that. So right now, realistically, this is the best solution for Unreal Engine 4. Now, the question is ultimately going to be, is this better than the built-in particle systems in Unreal and in um, Unity? And I have to think that there, there's some merit here because even with Niagara, why would they give them a mega grant if, if they didn't see merit in popcorn effects? So uh, that is popcorn effects. If you want to, again, available on all major platforms, you can just come here, uh, check it out, try it out. You will need to give them an email address that is valid to go ahead and download it. Uh, but if you want completely free checkout and the only one you're going to be able to integrate it in right now, it seems, is unfortunately Unreal Engine. Anyways, so that is popcorn effects. Uh, uh, I guess we could call it a particle effects editor slash middleware slash game engine integration solution. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.